Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Hiba and here on my channel I discuss recent missing person cases. If you're into that type of content, go ahead and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. Today I want to provide some updates in the Alexis Ware case. If you haven't already done so, I recommend watching my first video about Alexis where I get into more details about who everyone is and what happened. I'll link that video below if you're interested. But in this video, I want to discuss some new details that have been released. To give you a quick overview, Alexis is a 29-year-old woman who has been missing from South Carolina since January 30th. According to the last person to see her, TJ Patterson, who is one of her children's fathers, Alexis had called him to ask him if he could meet her and take the kids. The two allegedly met at a 7-Eleven gas station where they exchanged the kids. According to TJ, Alexis said that she would follow him to his mother's house. When they got on the road, however, TJ claims that Alexis sped up past him and made a turn. He didn't follow her, but he did try to call her multiple times, and when he was unable to get a hold of her, he called her mother. Oh, he saw her at the, at the store, right? Yeah, 7-Eleven on 29, Highway 29. All right, so so what happened? She just she dropped the kids off? Or? She called me, you know what I'm saying? I was at my aunt's house watching the game. She called me, she said, TJ, where you at? I need you to come pick um kids up. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to get by the gas. So uh, I said, okay, you know what I'm saying? How far can you make it? She said, I got three miles left in the car. So I said, try to make it to 7 11 on um, 29. So like, she was like, okay. So she made it. I pulled up, you know what I'm saying? And she, we, I got the kids. And she was like, uh, give me a hug. You know what I'm saying? I was like, man, you going to your mom? She said, I'm going to my mama's house. I said, okay. She said, well, I'm going to follow you to your mother's house. So got in the car, got the kids or whatever, gave her a hug. She followed me. And then I get on Amity Road to the red light. She speed around me and took off down Anderson Belt Highway. I was calling the phone, seeing where she was at. She went out to the phone. And about two minutes later, she cut it off. A few days later, Alexis's red Honda was found in a hunting area in McCormick, about 30 miles away. Her phone and purse were still inside, along with other personal belongings. Since my last video, there have been a few updates and clarifications that I'd like to share. Initially, a lot of people questioned TJ's story, rightfully so. If you don't know about his history, I recommend watching my previous video. To put it lightly, he didn't treat Alexis well and had recently been released from prison. Many of us were wondering whether Alexis ever actually made it to the 7-Eleven, especially because the footage from the gas station hasn't been publicly released. However, Alexis's family have seen the footage and they said that it seemed like everything was normal, Alexis was there, and nothing seemed out of the ordinary. So we at least know that she did make it to the 7-Eleven gas station. The family has also stated that TJ's story checks out according to detectives. His alibi checks out and he even was at work the next day. To me, that's a little bit strange because, you know, if my missing loved one, especially my children's father or mother, went missing, I probably would not be at work. We also have some new information about the car's movements that night. As we know, the vehicle was located in a rural hunting area and was found muddied. Her personal belongings, including her phone and her purse, were found in the vehicle. In my last video, I mentioned that the car had crossed the border into Augusta, Georgia, and then back into South Carolina. However, new information indicates that Alexis's car was seen exiting an apartment complex in Anderson before it was left in McCormick. It's not clear if Alexis was the one driving, however, like I said, it was seen exiting the apartment complex. I wonder if Alexis knows anyone who lives at that complex or if she had any reason to be there. Could that person potentially hold the answers? In my last video, I mentioned that Alexis may have been wearing a bonnet at the time of her disappearance. However, it turns out that her bonnet was found on the ground nearby her car. According to her family, the bonnet was on her head in the 7-Eleven footage. To me, this indicates that there was some sort of struggle or that Alexis was in a rush while leaving the car. Why else would she leave the bonnet behind? Is it possible that she wasn't the one to leave her car there and that somebody placed it there? Aside from these details, there's also some new information about Alexis's mental state and her actions leading up to her disappearance. I mentioned that Alexis had been acting a bit off and had made some strange social media posts. 
On the day that she disappeared, she also mentioned that there was a black truck outside of her home and she called the police office. We now know that Alexis had spent the majority of the weekend with her family. According to them, Alexis was saying some very alarming things. For example, Alexis was crying and saying that she didn't think that she would make it to her 30th birthday. According to her mother, Alexis would typically go all out for her birthday and have an outfit and her hair picked but this year she didn't have any plans. The day before she disappeared, Alexis cried as she told her mother that she was being followed and that she felt like something was going to happen to her. Unfortunately, Alexis didn't reveal any more details. This is so scary, and in my opinion, you can tell that Alexis was terrified. She kept crying and telling her parents and everyone around her multiple times that she was afraid. She even said something that gave me chills and that is that she wouldn't know what she would do if something happened to her while her kids were in the car. In regards to someone following Alexis, I think there are two mainstream opinions. We know that Alexis was acting strangely. Maybe she was dealing with something mentally that may have caused her to become paranoid and to believe that someone was after her. Paranoia can make people do things that they normally wouldn't do. Maybe she called TJ because she thought she was in danger and wanted to get her kids out of harm's way. If this is the case, she could be hiding out somewhere, still paranoid that somebody is chasing her. However, this doesn't explain how her car ended up in the state that it did and in the area that it did. In my opinion, the car was dropped off and there was somebody waiting nearby to pick the driver up. That means that at least one other person has to be involved. I say this because a 200 acre area was searched around where her car was found, but there was no trace of Alexis. If Alexis really was being followed by someone, it could explain why she called TJ as well. Again, knowing that she was in danger, maybe she decided to get the kids away from her and out of harm's way. TJ also mentioned that she asked him for a hug, and to me that's a bit odd because do they not usually hug when they see each other? Why was it so notable that he had to mention it? But if she did believe that she was in danger, maybe she thought that this would be the last time that she would see him. The fact that she sped off in front of him could also indicate that she needed help. Maybe it was her way of telling him that something was off and that she wanted him to follow her. However, as we know, he didn't. Based on her statements the days leading up to her disappearance, it's clear that Alexis knew that she wouldn't be around for long. Whether it was because she was leaving on her own or because someone was following her, it's like she knew that she was going to disappear. It seems like she was crying out for help, whether through telling her friends and family that someone was after her or by speeding up ahead of Travis, and it's a shame that we don't have any more clues as to what happened. Alexis is 5'5 and weighs 230 pounds. At the time she was last seen, Alexis was wearing a black jacket, a purple shirt, blue jeans, and Crocs. Someone knows something, whether they helped Alexis disappear or made her disappear, and it's time that they come forward. If you have any information, please call the number in the description below. My email is also in the description if you'd like to contact me. Thank you so much for watching this video, and don't forget to share Alexis' story, and I'll see you in my next one.